and good afternoon. It is Friday and that means it's time for our lunch and learn. Now today we're going to talk about um, mental diseases, mental dysfunctions, dementia, all right? So there's several different types of dementia. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the most common type. We're going to talk about the fastest growing type and then I'm going to tell you what you can do to prevent the most common cause of dementia. And so all of us who are at a certain age are going to be excited about this. I did not know this before I started doing this research, but um, the good thing is I'm doing a lot of this already and I'm going to be doing some more implementation because we definitely, if we know better, we can do better, right? So there are very many different kinds of dementia. Some people think that dementia is just Alzheimer's or just getting old. And just because you get old, you do not have to lose your cognitive function. So we want to dispel that myth right now. Okay, I'm really, really hoping that I'm going to be in my 90s and beyond and still have 100% of my mental faculties. Dementia is a term that is used to describe the loss of certain behavioral abilities, remembering, thinking, and reasoning skills, all right? Dementia develops when neurons in the brain become non-functional and lose the ability to communicate with other cells in the brain and die. So this is a natural part of aging, but I think it's more a part of not necessarily getting older, but getting older, feeling unloved, not taking care of yourself, not eating well, not exercising well, and all of those other kind of things. And so we want to look at the different types of dementia and what are the causes, if we know, and what we can do, which we do know some things. Okay, so the most common form is Alzheimer's disease, all right? It develops when a person starts developing tau proteins, T-A-U, proteins in the brain. Now, this becomes a kind of a plaque and it's sticky and it stops the communication of the nerves in the brain. However, there are specific types of curcumin made in a specific way to be bioavailable that goes in and eats up all of those tau proteins. So we don't have to have that and uh, we can certainly do something about that. The second most common form is vascular dementia. Now, vascular has to do with the blood vessels. And if you already have type 2 diabetes, you already have vascular issues. And so you can have vascular dementia more readily as an extenuation of diabetes because diabetes affects the circulation. All right. So your little blood vessels in your brain, and there are a lot of them. I don't know if you've ever hit your head or opened up your head. You, you've had a head injury. Uh, when my daughter was three, she was in the bath and she was washing her hair and she came up too hard under the faucet. We lived in England at the time and the faucet was square and about this big. When she came up right on the crown of her head, she hit that uh, faucet. Blood went everywhere. Don't ask me why I had left a three-year-old in the bathtub by herself. I do not know. I'd gone out around the corner to get something in the house, heard her scream, came back in, the, the, the tub was full of blood. Called the equivalent of 911 and I was told when we finally got to the hospital that, oh, this is not a big deal. You just have so many blood vessels in your scalp, right? Well, right under that is your brain and you have tons and tons of blood vessels in your brain as well. When they get um, marginalized for whatever reason, then you stop getting the nutrition and you stop getting the oxygen into your brain. And when that happens, then your brain cells begin to die. Hemorrhagic stroke also is a way that you can have dementia because stroke disrupts the blood vessels. You can have blood clots. There are a lot of things that can go on and it can create a um, dysfunction in the way that the brain fires because that's how you think that's how you process things is through the circuitry in the brain and when you have a, um, a stroke that disrupts that okay it stops the blood flowing in the right direction and so none of us want to have that we want to make sure that you go and see a cardiologist if you're at a certain age if your triglycerides are high on your blood work that is a harbinger for uh, cardiovascular events. So 
if you've got blood clots, if you've got plaquing, if you've got any any kind of thing like that in your circulatory system, it can affect your brain. And so we want to make sure that you take care of that so you're not going to be um, having a stroke. I'm losing all my papers here, okay? Uh, the second or the third is uh, Lewy body dementia. Now, Lewy body is not something that your brain has. It's something that your brain develops, and it's not necessarily in the brain. It's in the covering of the brain, and it results in what is called Lewy body dementia. It, is again, is a protein. It's not the tau protein. It is a different kind of protein called alpha synuclein. Probably didn't say that right. It's a different kind of protein. There is no known cure for that. Then there's a diagnosis called mixed dementia, and that's where you have several different types of dementia, not just one type. So those people, unfortunately, their brain is just not working. And so they will label them with the most predominant form of dementia. So there are a, a few medications that you can do, but we don't want to have medications as a lifestyle, right? Most of the cause of dementia is shrinking brain, all right? Your brain shrinks. We don't want that. We want to make sure that our brain stays very healthy. We want to make sure that everything works the way it is supposed to, and there are certain nutrients that you need. There are certain kind of foods that you can incorporate more and more into your diet so that you're able to stop that shrinking in the brain, all right? So when that particular type of dementia is your predominant one, they will call it frontotemporal dementia, all right? As damage occurs in the frontal and the temporal lobes of the brain, frontal, temporal, okay, as dementia, uh, dementia, as damage occurs there, then those lobes begin to lose their function. It is the most prevalent form of dementia that develops in individuals between 45 and 65 years old. This can turn into Parkinson's disease. Now, Parkinson's disease is known by the telltale tremor. You'll have tremor in your hand, you have tremor in your neck, in your head. That is the telltale sign of that. And what causes Parkinson's disease is a lack of dopamine in the brain. The good thing is there is a drug that you can take called, um, I, I want to say, le I can't remember, uh, levo, levo dopa or something, something like that. There's a natural herb that is from broad beans that helps you with your uh, uh, dopamine production. And so if you have that, if you know someone that has that, then that's something that you can add to your diet. I had an uncle that had Parkinson's. My dad uh, had some slight tremoring, and we gave him a supplement that supplemented his dopamine, and the tremors just stopped and did not progress. So there's a lot of things that you can do with Parkinson's, all right, that doesn't have to be a dreaded diagnosis. If it's in your family line, if you just keep your dopamine high, then you're going to be able to uh, do a workaround on that. Now, the Parkinson's and the Lewy body uh, dementia are very, very similar because they both have that protein in the brain, all right? You can have a dementia that has absolutely no symptoms, and this is called normal pressure dementia. And this means that you've got an excessive amount of cerebral uh, fluid building up in the brain, but you don't have any symptoms. You don't have a headache. You don't have any kind of pressure. You don't have anything like that. What they do is they put a shunt in your brain, and it just opens that up and allows that uh, cerebral fluid to move. And then when that happens, then you're not going to have that, that part anymore. So patients see a lot of improvement when they have that shunt surgery. All right. There's another disease, and it's called... Kreutzfeld Jacob, okay, it is a prion disease. Prions are misshapen proteins that trigger brain disorders, all right? It is a condition that causes dementia, all right? The main difference between that particular dementia and others is this one is a very, very fast-moving 
dementia. So if you have somebody who's having some cognitive difficulties and it seems to be progressing pretty quickly, it might be the Creutzfeld jacob disease. There's Huntington disease. We've all heard about Huntington's. It's another very progressive condition that affects the individual's brain. Also inherited, all right, and it's inherited due to a genetic mutation. Now, if you have this in your family, you are not doomed to have Huntington's disease, okay? There are a lot of uh, there are a lot of nutrients that will bridge a gene defect. All right, we do DNA testing here, not Ancestry, 23andMe, nothing, nothing like that. Okay, this is just with a medical lab in the Austin, Texas area. The results just come to me. They're at the lab. They come to me. They come to you, and that's it. But there are uh, nutritional supplements that can bridge a gap if you've got a genetic SNP that says that you have inherited that disease, you need to get tested and see if there's some kind of uh, supplements that you can take in order to uh, forego having that diagnosis in yourself. So remember, there are genetics, right? Genetics is what you're born with. And then there's epigenetics. Epigenetics is what you do in your physical body that will turn a gene on or turn a gene off, all right? So people mistakenly believe, I have this in my DNA, it's in my family, I'm doomed to have this XYZ disease. Maybe, but maybe not. What you eat, what you drink, who you love, how you live your life, how much drama and stress is in your life, all of those go forward into uh, determining whether you're going to have that switch turned on or turned off. So there are a lot of things that we can do. So don't just think that because it's in your DNA, you're doomed to have that disease. Not necessarily, all right? And then the final, not the final one, but the other one I want to talk to you about is Wernicke Kors Korsakoff, all right, which is another brain disorder. It is mainly a vitamin B1 deficiency. How easy is that to uh, restore Vitamin B1. Vitamin B1 comes in all your fruits and vegetables. And so if you have a diet rich in fruits and vegetables, then you're going to be able to uh, ameliorate that. It's a very easy thing to, to, to turn around. And this is why we do our wonderful PS3 scanner, because it will tell you if you are absorbing the nutrition that you're taking in. Okay, So that particular cause of dementia is very easily um, alleviated when you up your vitamin B1. Now, when you have that, if you get diagnosed with that, they're going to put you in the hospital and give you B1 intravenously. So that's kind of a, a heavy duty uh, change. But if you make sure that you're getting all of your B vitamins, they are known as your don't go crazy vitamins, right? For a reason. They are water soluble, so they do not stay in the tissues. You have to get them in every day with your fruits and vegetables. Now, the most, uh, the fastest growing uh, dementia is Parkinson's disease, right? When Dr. Parkinson discovered Parkinson's disease in 1817, right, there were only six, uh, six people that he could find that had it, right? So almost 2,000 years later, or a little over 2,000 years later, right, we have six million people in the world with Parkinson's disease, and that is expected to double to 12 million by 2040, right? So that's a lot. So they're saying that this is not just because the population is getting older. This is because of toxicity in the environment, and there are some things that we can do about that, all right? So we want to look at what we can do. And so the three causes of Parkinson are aging, all right? environmental toxins, and uh, viral infections. Now, all of us have viruses. Everyone has viruses. So we're not going to, you're not going to be on the planet and not have a virus. Most of the time, your viruses are just part of your microbiome. They're part of who you are. It's what you've been exposed to. It's what your parents have been exposed to. And it's just stuff that's in there. And we just live with it and we're good. When we're not stressed, our immune system just keeps those viruses down and they don't explode, right? 
when we get stressed, when we get tired, when we have drama, all those kind of things, then the viruses pop out and they give us trouble. Something that you probably already know is the common cold sore. The common cold sore is a herpes simplex virus, right? When you are stressed, you're going to pop out a cold sore. So what is the answer to that? Don't get stressed. In fact, don't get stressed is the answer to every health condition, okay? Because when we are not stressed, then our body is able to do what it needs to do. So the aging population, we're all getting older, all right? But the number one risk factor in Parkinson's is age. Longevity is a prerequisite for many diseases, including Parkinson's. Sometimes you have people that have a genetic problem and they get Parkinson's at a very, very young age, but mostly it is a very, uh, is something that you get when you're very much older. The percentage of Americans aged 65 and older nearly quadrupled from 4.1% in the 1900s to 16% in 2019, okay? So, Parkinson's is believed to be caused by the loss of neurons that produce dopamine. We talked about that. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter. So, you've got all these little chemicals in your brain that cause your brain to work the way your brain is supposed to. Stress will stop the production of all of them, all right? Insomnia will stop the production of your neurotransmitter. So, we don't want to do that. Environmental toxins is the second cause of dementia, all right? Uh, it says that since the Industrial Revolution, Parkinson's has absolutely exploded, all right? It's air pollution, herbicides, and pesticides. And here in the United States, we are so very lucky that our industrial farming community absolutely douses our foods with pesticides and herbicides, right? So we get it just by eating the fruits and vegetables if we don't be, uh, if we don't go to the grocery store and we're mindful that we buy organic, we wash them properly, we do all the things that we can do to get as much of that residue out of there. The residue is something that we can do something about, but when it's in the soil, the roots pull all of that stuff into the actual uh, food component that's something that we have more of a difficulty, but this is the thing. When you come and see me or you go and see another holistic practitioner, what they're going to do is they're going to test you for heavy metal toxicity. We can do that here in the clinic with our EAV. We can take some hair and send it off to a lab and they can do their analysis to find out how many heavy metals you have in your hair. And doing a heavy metal detox is an easy, easy, easy thing, okay? We've got a lot of heavy metals in our environment. If you have had a lot of vaccines, you've got heavy metals in your body. If you've had a lot of dental work, you've got heavy metals in your body, all right? And there's just a lot of ways that we get them just through living, all right? You're not doing anything wrong. You're not doing anything bad. They're just ubiquitous in the atmosphere, and we're just going to have them, all right? One of the worst offenders is Paraquat. Now, I guess I've been living under a hill somewhere because I thought that we had outlawed Paraquat 30 years ago because it was so bad, right? But guess what? No, we haven't. So, Paraquat is um, a chemical. It's an herbicide, and it is associated with 150% increased risk of Parkinson's, all right? due to its ability to generate reactive oxygen species and cause oxidative stress in the brain. So what does that mean in real people's language? That means free radicals in the brain. Now, free radicals are electrons. All right, I'm going to give you a little quick chemistry lesson, right? So we've got a little atom here. We've got a little atom here. We've got one little electron here. We've got one little electron here. When they match up, that it's safe and stable. If they're out there just on their own without a mate, they become free radicals. And free radicals is what causes us to rust from the inside out. Okay, So we don't want to have free radical damage. We don't want to have oxidative stress, which is just another way of saying that. So paraquat enhances the oxidative stress in the brain. All right, 
like I say, I thought that they had outlawed it years ago. It kills the weeds, paraquat kills the weeds that Roundup cannot. And it has been used, and I did not know this either, it had been used to commit suicide and homicide. In fact, on the package, it says one sip can be fatal. Now, I don't know about you, but I do gardening all the time. I have pesticides, herbicides that I use very, very carefully because bugs will eat my plants and bugs will make my flowers not be pretty. And so I'm thankful that we have those things but to protect myself and, and all those kind of things so that we use them responsibly. I would never, ever think that it would be okay for me to have a sip of a uh, pesticide, but be that as it may, it is on the uh, packaging. One sip can kill. The pesticide's own manufacturer has apparently known about the toxic effects related to Parkinson's for over 50 years, referring to an internal document from the company that manufactures it. More than 30 countries have banned it, but the United States hasn't. Instead, the weed killer is sprayed almost over all the country. All right. Its use in recent years in the United States has doubled. So that being the case, when you come to see me and I say, oh, your body's telling me that you've got heavy metal toxicity and you ask me the question, well, what did I do to get that? You're just alive on the planet and you happen to live in the United States. It is in the atmosphere. It is on the land. You're not going to be able to uh, not be exposed to it. OK, uh, the next chemical is called trichloroethylene, right? This is a widely used dry cleaning chemical. It is associated with a 500% increased risk of Parkinson's disease. And uh, it reproduces the features of the disease in laboratory animals and damages the parts of the cells that are impaired in Parkinson's. It's also used, this chemical, to extract oil from vegetables. So if you're still using vegetable oil, which please tell me you don't. Please tell me that you don't, do not use safflower oil, corn oil, um, canola, canola, I knew there was another C. Don't use those oils because they're rancid and they've got these chemicals in there and they're hurting you. Use the most pure olive oil that you can find. Use coconut oil if you're not going to be heating too, too hot. Okay, you've got to be careful with that. Avocado oil is good. Peanut oil is good. So you've got a lot of other alternatives. And you've got just plain old lard. All right? You've got plain old lard if you can't find anything else. Okay? Do not use vegetable oils. Right? So these, these uh, oils remove grease. So if you are a mechanic or you are... Uh, and as someone who works on machinery, right, then you're exposed to this component all the time. I was thinking about this when I was reading this this week. Our poor dry cleaners, they're exposed to this all the time. What's going on with them? And it would be a great study to, to know, do the people that work in these industries, do they have a higher than normal prevalence of Parkinson's disease? All right. This contamination is in the air the water and the soil in areas where it is produced or used. In January this year, the EPA said that this chemical, um, you can make me say it again, aren't you? Trichloroethylene, they call it TCE for short, all right, says that it poses an unreasonable risk to human health, yet it is still on the market. And the global use is waxing, not waning. That means it's increasing. Thousands of sites around the country have been contaminated by that chemical, including the marine base Camp Lejeune. Now, we've seen Camp Lejeune on the adverts on the TV, right? If you've been at Camp Lejeune and you've been exposed to the water supply, blah, 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 blah. Well, they didn't tell you that it was this particular chemical, but this is what it is, all right? So the exposures to pesticide increases your risk of Parkinson's by 70 percent. All right. We don't want to do that. And then the last thing I want to tell you before I tell you the remedies, right, are viral infections. So evidence suggests that infection with certain viruses can increase the risk of developing Parkinson's disease. 
don't freak out when I tell you this, all right? If you keep yourself healthy, there are tons of things that you can do to stop this virus replicating in your body or manifesting in your body. That's what we don't want. We don't want the manifestation. RS, uh, sorry, HSV, which is the common virus that's herpes simplex, all right, it causes cold sores. While most people infected with this experience mild or no symptoms, some individuals develop more neurological complications. Recent research suggests that herpes simplex may also contribute to the development of Parkinson's disease. Now, everybody and their mother has had a cold sore at one time or another. I mean, it's just something that we see all the time. If you've had chicken pox, it's the same virus same virus family. If you've had shingles, it's the same viral family. So there's not many of us that have been able to escape that in one form or another, all right? So I don't want you to get all freaked out because you have this in your system. What you need to do is stay calm, stay relaxed, take your L-lysine, uh, or, or make sure that you take something else that's going to be uh, recommended for you so that you can do what you need to do. Now, all of these dementia cases involve, involve shrinking of the brain. There is a nutrient called, hello, magnesium, and magnesium stops shrinking of the brain. Most people are magnesium deficient. Right? If you have cramps a lot, uh, your feet cramp, your legs cramp, and that kind of thing, you can have a magnesium deficiency. So they're recommending that we take uh, 500 uh, and 50 milligrams per day. Most supplements only give you about 300 milligrams per day. So you're going to have to increase. I take high dollar, high potency vitamins and I'm still only getting 300 milligrams a day. But the good news for me and hopefully the good news for you is that I eat a lot of avocados. I eat salmon. I eat lentils. I eat black beans. I eat um, nuts. And so all of those have magnesium in it. So it's really, really easy to get magnesium into the body. And magnesium, if you have a lot of magnesium in your diet, it is linked to larger brains, okay? Larger brains. So it is the shrinking brain that has the trouble with dementia. So if we are magnesium rich in our diet and our supplement, supplementation, and then that's going to go a long way into helping us avoid uh, dementia. So here are some nutritional facts. All right. Uh, yes, Velma, magnesium biglycinate. Yes, it's very, very good. Okay. Um, almonds. One ounce of almonds have 80 milligrams of magnesium. An ounce is not very many. I mean, I can probably hold two ounces in my hand, right? So that's not very many to get a good amount of magnesium. Cashews give you 72 milligrams, one ounce. One tablespoon of flaxseed, 40 milligrams. Peanuts, don't really recommend peanuts because peanuts have aflatoxin, so I don't really recommend those. Pumpkin seeds, hulled and roasted, one ounce, one ounce, that's a tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons, 150 milligrams of magnesium. Now, pumpkin seeds, fun fact, Pumpkin seeds are great if you have parasites. And yes, most of us have parasites in one way or another, okay? And so pumpkin seeds are really, really good for that, and that increases your magnesium intake. Chia seeds, 111 magnesium uh, milligrams of magnesium. Black beans, a half a cup, 60 milligrams. Um, lima beans, a half a cup, 40 milligrams. Quinoa. One cup, 56 uh, milligrams. Non-fat milk, one cup, 24 to 27 milligrams. Yogurt, 42 milligrams per eight ounces. Spinach, Swiss chard, collard grains. Now, those are not my favorite. I'm just going to tell you, I, those are not my favorite, okay? But if you like those or you put them in your smoothie, which is what I do, you're going to get 78 milligrams of magnesium on average. Avocados, a whole avocado, 58 milligrams. Bananas, 32 milligrams. Papaya, 33 milligrams. Blackberries, 29 milligrams. All right. 
Green peas, 31 milligrams. Sweet corn, 27 milligrams. Potato, 48 milligrams. So we eat these foods every day. So we hopefully are getting about 200 milligrams of magnesium from our food. The final one, which is my absolute favorite one, is your dark, dark chocolate. It has 70 to 85% of the chocolate in there. And one little ounce, just a little bitty ounce, is 64 milligrams. So we can do a lot to protect our brains. We can do a lot with our nutrition so that we don't have that shrinking brain. One of the things, if people would just drink the water that they're supposed to drink, your cells would be fatter because they wouldn't be dehydrated. And that in and of itself may help you with your brain function. All right. The aging brain needs nutrition. Uh, some of the dementias, now I'm not quite sure which one it is because it's been a long time since I studied this particular thing. But one of the dementias is caused by your brain not absorbing and uptaking the glucose that you're, that's already in your blood, your blood sugar. The brain doesn't recognize it anymore because of toxicity and all that kind of thing. And so if you will eat three, three tablespoons of coconut oil, right? That is a medium chain fatty acid and it will go into the brain. The brain will recognize it as a food source and within about three weeks, that particular type of dementia is no longer an issue. So there are a lot of things that we can do. So as we get older, knowledge is power, right? The more we know, the better we can do. We've got to change our mindset. I'm not getting older. I'm not going to have age-related diseases. Yes, I am getting older, but I don't have to get decrepit and demented because I'm getting older, right? So the mindset is eat well, live well, love well, right? And then you can continue to live your life the way you want to live your life. So hopefully you found this a uh, benefit and you're going to be able to add some of these foods into your diet. You're going to be able to increase your supplementation of magnesium. And I will see you next week. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for all the things that you do. We appreciate you. We appreciate the honor that you watch the program, right? We do appreciate that because it's 30 minutes of your life that you can never get back. So I'm very, very um, hopeful that you found value in this and I will see you next Friday. Take care. Enjoy your weekend. Take care of yourself.